Ready, steady, round up. The video where I talk to you about the changes to my board game collection. Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette. Welcome to Good Owl Games and this is July's monthly roundup video. Um, so yeah, here I'm going to talk about some of the new games I've acquired, the things I've been playing and a bit of general chit chat as well to do with the channel and just kind of myself. And fortunately I have included little kind of timestamps so you can hop through the video as you so wish. But of course I'd love you to stay and hear out the whole thing and give me some of your insights into what you've been playing over the past month. Um, right, so yeah, July, did this month just go really quickly? Um, I thought I'd gotten out of this trend of saying every month goes quickly, but um, apparently not. Um, it's the height of summer, maybe some of you are enjoying your holidays, I know I am. Um, and that's meant I've had some time for games, and also excuses to buy games, because you know, holidays and things like that. So I'm going to jump right into it, um, and I have a, a series of games that came from the same sale. So Asthma Day had a sale about a month or so back, um, and this is based in the States, and of course I'm not based in the States. However, the bargains were kind of, were so good that they were kind of, they were worth purchasing and paying kind of the extra handling fees and shipping fees to get them to Ireland, um, would have been still cheaper than if we had bought them in Europe. So um, that it's always kind of exciting when you can find a good deal somewhere. Um, and so I'm going to go through these well, bargains and why, well, why we found these bargains in the first place is for one specific game um, I've been looking for for quite some time and this is called The uh, Magnificent. I believe it's from Aporta Games. Um, and this is a game that came out kind of at a time when there was a, bu a bunch of other really interesting games and it's the one that I kind of never got round to trying and what it's about is that you are trying to put on a magic show um, and so part of this game is is dice management you use your dice for your actions part of it is also polyonimo based where you're filling out your board with these shapes so that you have kind of space in your tents for things um, it's less thematic than I had hoped um, I you know it's got magic you know putting cast, cast, well, like I'm putting on shows you know what I mean that that's something that that's kind of full of imagery and the cover of the box is so cool and exciting that I was a little bit let down by kind of what was inside of it um, now the good part is is that there is a very solid and interesting game in here there's like a set number of turns it's very tight play you need to plan everything out um, in advance there are a number of tracks to engage with and go up um, and such like that um, but I just felt that it was kind of lacking a little pizzazz um, which is ironic because this is a, a game about magic um, I'd hope there'd be a little bit more kind of fun to it rather it, it takes itself kind of seriously or at least it feels that way to me um so yeah so the magnificent uh, i don't I've only played it once I'm, I'm already wondering if I will bother to try it again um I'm not sure it's necessarily I don't know I don't know if it's more exciting than other games I own that I would take it down from the shelf do I think it's a bad game no um absolutely not I think there's a very good game in here I just wish they'd taken it a little bit further or made it a little bit more I don't know whimsical or fun it definitely feels very euro and just in case I forgot to mention, these games that I've just acquired are games I've only played once, right? So these are kind of first impressions, thoughts, the, the games I, I've played, I, I've probably played more than this. Um, so yeah, so this is just kind of initial insights. Um, so the next thing that came in this ginormous order, um, God, it was nice to get a box of games arriving to the house, it's been a while, um, is Starcadia Quest from Simon Games. And I think we got a single expansion as well, something to do with pirates, the R expansion. Um, so for Starcadia Quest, for those of you uninitiated, is a spin-off kind of of the original game, which was called Arcadia Quest, which now comes in a series of, you know, fun and entertaining brands. Um, such as like Ar Ar Arcadia Quest Inferno, which I, I did own for a bit. Um, so yeah, you can see this is the, the same game, but with a different kind of theme. And Star Arcadia Quest has the space one. And what this game is about is that you, um, <laughs> it's a miniatures game for a start. There is a map and you and your opponent will have objectives to complete to become the winner. 
Um, so there is ways to kill each other as players, but there's also ways for the board to kill you and to interact with the monsters and things you summon. You get equipment and items for your characters. It's kind of a campaign game. You keep stuff between games so you can play a series of games together. Um, it's This isn't something that's normally very... I don't know, very us. We don't normally do 1v1 kind of games like this, but I guess the point is you don't have to necessarily kill each other if you don't want to. Um, so, you know, during the game you earn points for doing specific things. So killing your opponent is one, um, completing like whatever quest or maybe like take this item from this place to this place or kill a certain number of these type of monsters, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's fairly basic. It's easy to follow along with. And... You know, the game is designed around, the, around around this concept, which is, you know, engage with things on this map. Um, I like how kind of easy it is to pick up and put down. It's very fun and kind of whimsical. Um, I seem, actually, I seem to do okay that I won the first game of this, which is surprising. Um, I think if you enjoy kind of those, I don't know, there's a bunch of you on a map and you're kind of kind of fighting with each other kind of melee style games I think you might have a lot of fun with this I do like that the characters can kind of continue so you can enhance them and get them better equipment and stuff as the game goes on I think the game probably needed something like that as opposed to you know mul multiple you know starting points so it does feel like it expands yeah but it's just kind of fun and easy um as everything with Simon, it comes with a great in certain way of in storing of storing all of the game and all of the pieces there are a number of those and this one was just so cheap we were like why why not try it because we didn't mind arcadia quest inferno and we thought that maybe the space version would be kind of more fun and sure yeah space <laughs> space is always good so yeah so that's been all right actually um i think we might try and play that again at some point i'm hoping it's not too big a game that it feels like it's too taxing to get to the table despite it having kind of all the organizers and stuff to help you out with have you played with any of the Arcadia Quest franchise? Um, if you have, which one is your favourite? Um, how do you find it as a game? Is it fun to play with your friends? Do you have a good games group, I suppose, for, for playing it? 1v1, I suppose, I don't think you're really seeing the game um, at full potential. Um, but it was still fun to play just like that. So, right, so the third game in this box of Asmodee games turned out to be The Jewel in the Crown, everybody. Um, and this was a game that cost $5. $5, you know, that's kind of sad. And this is Victorian Masterminds. Um, now, this is a game I'd heard about, but not really seen anybody play or talk about. And when I saw it was $5 in kind of the, the bargain bucket, I was like, I'm going to look this up and just see because it, it sounded so familiar. Um, it's got two brilliant designers behind it, um, Eric Lang and Antoine Bauza great great game designers it came from Simon. it had miniatures and things inside it I was like for five dollars how could you go wrong <laughs> um and boy was I um kind of impressed with this one so what's it what is it about well you are an evil mastermind um kind of set in the times of Sherlock Holmes I believe and you are trying to build um you're basically not quite your doomsday device but like you you are building your kind of giant ship or whatever that's going to help you take over the world and to do that you need to go to various cities around the world to gather resources so that you can you know build your your ship um and so in that sense the game is a race game everyone has their own kind of unique ship they have to build and you have a stack full of tokens which are your actions um and so these allow you to do things like engage with the the different cities and each of the tokens has a special bonus or things it will do and you go and you place it upside down in wherever place you would like to activate it and once a certain number of tokens have been placed, they get flipped over and resolved in the order kind of they went in and when they came out. Um, and that's kind of the, the, the kind of the crux of the game. The idea of where do I put my token? How quickly can I get it back? Because the tokens are tied up until someone completes that section. And then you're able to get you get items which allow you to have pieces for your ship. And then so when you fill in parts of your ships, you get upgrades and bonuses as well. Um, 
this was really fun. Um, it's a stunning looking game. There are like miniatures for all of the cities and there's all these little buildings. Those kind of tokens, those chips you have for bidding or for using as your items are fantastic cool. Your board's really nice. I love the imagination that kind of went into the different ships you're flying and the parts of them. Um, like, and we had a bit of fun with this at two, and, and at two players, um, even though I think this is definitely a, a game that wants more people because you're putting in all these kind of hidden tokens and you want to have as much kind of interfering with each other as possible um, with more players. But for f I, cu I couldn't believe this was five bucks. And, and more importantly, I couldn't believe I hadn't heard anyone else really talking about it. It's definitely light. It's not a serious game. It's kind of fun and easy. And I think maybe that's why it was such a surprise. Because um, I was expecting it, expecting it to be, I don't know, a little, I, I don't know, I, I, well, yeah, maybe a little more serious. But that notion of um, bidding kind of with your chips as, um, as your actions is really clever because you have to like just reveal you, have, you don't get to choose there is an action that allows you to choose if you can unlock it so it's basically reveal the top chip and kind of decide where to put it and try and time it best so you can get the best out of it um so yeah really impressed with this one if you're looking for something kind of light um and fun with a little bit of back and forth and stuff between people um yeah this was actually quite a delight um so yeah what a great find fantastic find what's been your best board game find up up until this up until up until Victoria Masterminds my best find was a copy of Sakura for 10 euros um, and I love that game that game was a big surprise it's a cool Reiner Knizia game where you basically reorder the line with various cards but it's really really fun and it was always the cheapest thing I'd ever gotten so now this is the new cheapest thing so tell me about your best bargains what's the least amount of money you've paid for a game you actually enjoyed want to hear all about it Right, next on the agenda are two purchases from my own local game shop, who I hope I'm keeping in business at this rate um, with all these purchases. Um, but I've only played one of them. So the first one that got to the table is, I'm always going to try and say this wrong, is Gutenberg is the name of it. But I keep wanting to call it Project Gutenberg after the website, but never mind. It's called Gutenberg. Um, and apparently Portal Games have just picked this up. Um, and so Gutenberg, ugh, hmm. this is a game when you open the box, it's very impressive. There are some fantastic components in here, including like little individual cardboard boxes for all of the different types of tokens. Um, so it's a game about the, the printing press um, and about, you know, um, creating kind of vellums and things like that. Um, yeah it's, it's printing um and you get letters part of the game that are like in, engraving letters they're like the type faces um they're arrays and everything like you could probably put ink on them and they would work and i thought they were fantastic um there's all sorts of things going on in this game and basically what it is about is completing orders um and so um, people are going to come and they're going to ask for a particular type of manuscript to be made and to do that you're going to need various parts so you're going to need first of all the order you're going to need ink to do the order with you're going to need letters typeface to be able to do it um, some um, orders will want kind of special uh, specifications and you'll have to kind of upgrade your workshop to be able to accommodate those um, and then there's kind of patrons as well who will help you out um, and that is kind of the turn phase I've just I've just gone through there um, so yeah it's it's very straightforward um, in that sense the game is actually quite fun to play because um, it is a lot of planning and working things out um, and it is partially bidding as well because you can kind of you can bid to decide which phase you would like to activate in first so each of those steps are phases in the game a little bit like race for the galaxy or something like that and you can elect to do something in these phases or not and you can make an attempt to you know be the first one to activate so you get the best choices um and so there's that portion there going on as well um, yeah, I, I've always liked a game that's very direct about what you're trying to do, which is, here is your goal, go complete the goal. And you think that might get kind of tiresome after a certain amount of rounds, but it didn't really, um, because they kept kind of ch changing it up. Um, you can only have four orders at any one time, and they varied in difficulty, and you would need different things to get them, so you could spend a while doing that. 
The other fun part is it's got a cog um, system in it, a little bit like Tolkien, and the cogs turn once around and you're able to use whatever kind of um, ability is showing just for that round. And then next round as the cog turns, it changes again. Um, I quite like this idea. I wish there was more ways to manipulate it um, than there are, um, but it's very cool. The main problem I have with this game is just how many components there are and how many bits of things. Um, so for example, the cogs for both myself and my husband's board, you're given kind of a, a wooden dowel to press in to hold the cog in place. Um, neither of ours fit, so none of my cogs worked. Um, there seemed to, there's just, a, there was a lot of cards, a lot of tokens, a lot of things, like there was a lot of little bits that you constantly had to be touching while playing. And I think that really took away from some of the game. I think it could have been streamlined just a tad um, to really kind of pull it all together. Um, but overall, I think I like this one um, maybe more than I thought I would because when initially we started, I wasn't so sure. I wasn't so sure. It was taking me a while to kind of not necessarily wrap my head around everything, but figure where because everything happens in an order. So figuring out the order and things like that. But um, yeah, it was definitely fun, um, and it's a good looking game just yeah there's lots of bits to it so you know there, there's different ways of, of dealing with that um i like I, the, I think the most annoying part is probably that their your ink is tiny tiny cardboard tokens and they're supposed to go into a bag um that you can't see them from however it's once around you have to put out the the little tokens without being able to see what they are so you change the inks on the board you pull them out of the bag without looking but the rest of the time if you need ink you have to just go digging in the bag trying to find one the right way up um, just these kind of kind of little things I think that just threw the game a little bit off kilter for me but I think it was a very good game here um, and yeah hopefully I'll try it again soon so that is Gutenberg um, I have to say I kind of I like I like the theme how do you guys feel about a theme like that is it interesting would you I don't know a game about manuscripts yeah, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? It could be good. Um, well, it was good. It was. It was. It was rather good indeed. Um, so yeah. So that's Gutenberg. Right. The last game I've acquired is sitting behind me, and I've not played it yet. And this is Blackout Hong Kong, um, from Alexander Pfister. Um, oh, see that this one is is suspicious for me because. The, this is a game that came out and um, and basically just went silent. Um. I've seen very few people talk about it and I remember the reviews when it was first released was that people didn't like kind of the graphical design and stuff of the board, that it was very dark and things like that. As far as I'm aware, it's a game about a blackout in Hong Kong. I know, right? The title says it all. But I saw that it came up kind of cheap in my local store and I'd heard one or two other people saying it was a much better game than people give it credit for. And I'm always one to give something a chance. Um, and normally while I in, enjoy kind of Alexander Pfister's games, I don't end up keeping them usually. And he's had some questionable themes as of late. Um, but this one seemed less questionable than most. Um, I liked how it looks on the, the back of the box. It looks a little like you're going to play Pandemic or something. Um, so I'll report back next month with how that one goes. It's just got a bigger rule book than we'd anticipated. And because we're on holiday, I didn't quite get round to it yet. Um, so that's next on my agenda of things. Has anybody here played it? Have you tried it? Tell, tell me what you think. Um, <laughs> I'd be curious to get a little bit of insight into, into how it plays. Right, so I think that's everything new this month. I'll do a little like brain search there. Um, yeah, I think so. So what did you get this month, if anything? Um, I'd love to hear about what you've been playing. So put them in the comment box below. That'd be great. Um, and I'll roll over and I'll tell you guys what I've been playing. To be fair to you all, I've, yeah, I've kind of talked about all the games I've been playing, right? Because when you get the new games, you play them. They're kind of the things you've been playing. Um, but... We did have a birthday party here in which we got to introduce some people to new games. And I thought I'd talk about some of these because I always think it's fun to see board games through someone else's eyes or to have your own perceptions smashed. Um, <laughs> so the first game I'm going to talk about is Potion Explosion. And I think this is from Horrible Guild Games. Um, maybe you've heard of it. I hope you've heard of it. If you haven't, you should go and check this out. Um, so Potion Explosion, um, before the worlds of the, quack, the quacks of Quidlinburg, is a game about exploding your potion. 
Um, and basically what it is, yes, you're trying to explode, you're trying to build a potion and you're doing this by exploding ingredients so that you can kind of group the different types together to fill up your potion and to create the, the flask. Um, how this really works, um, and it's, it's much more abstract than that, is that there is um, a tray of different coloured marbles, um, and I'll put up a picture, and you can see them all in their different rows, and they're random where they go, and you pick a marble of a particular colour, and you're going to use the coloured marbles to fill out your potions, so the potions will require, like, you know, three yellow, two black, and a blue, and it's up to you to get the marbles from the machine, from the explosion machine, I suppose, into your potion. Now, that all sounds very basic. The fun part, if when you remove one of these colored balls and two colored balls meet that are the same color, you get those as well. And it's not just two, two or more. Um, and so you're gonna wanna create these kind of chains where things kind of explode into each other so you can get loads of colors and complete your potions. And that's the game. Um, I've had this one a, a while. My edition is in German because at the time it was kind of out of print. Um, so I've got like a big plastic tray full of marbles and I really like this one. Um, I, we normally play it at two player um, and it's very kind of, it's very easy going. This is very fun. This is very chill and something that new gamers really are attracted to because it reminds you a little bit of kind of like Tetris or Puzzle, Puzzle Bobble. You know those kind of games where you connect up the colours and then they explode and they disappear. It's kind of got that feel to it. So it's something that's very intuitive. You look at it and you know what this game is about, which is a fantastic feature. But as it turns out neither um, people in my game group had played this we were slightly appalled I kind of I guess I kind of assumed everyone knew about potion explosion so it was kind of a delight to be able to show it to new people and to be able to play it with more than two people um, at four it was interesting because it meant some of the turns were taking you know longer than others and it was much more difficult to gauge what colors were going to be available for you by the time it got to your turn because you know the person next to you took a, a colour, this one, this one, and of course then, you know, what you're left with is nothing at all like what you left going round. So I feel like the game's definitely less strategic with more players. Um, but you know what, it was fun. It's, it's multiplayer solitaire. You really are kind of just doing your own thing. Um, and it was quick and easy to play, um, and it was it was nice. Um, it was fun to introduce it to somebody else. Um, so yeah, if you haven't heard of Potion Explosion, I'm here to spread the good word. Um, there is also an app of the game, so I also thought people had heard of that because it was quite popular for a while as well. But if that sounds like something fun for you, you should definitely look, look it up. I think it would make for a great family game and things like that. It's very tactile um, and very fun. So yeah, Potion Explosion, big upvote for me. Um, I usually end up um, purporting kind of it, it's, I don't know, it's forgotten, it's forgotten relative gizmos, um, which also uses the coloured balls, but in a, a more advanced fashion. Um, but yeah, but definitely Potion Explosion um, is a game that people should know about. So there's that. Um, and the second game I'm going to talk about is one I haven't played in a while and I probably won't play in a while again so I was like I'll fit this in this month and then worry about everything next month um, and this is Scoville from Tasty Minstrel Games um, who I'm very sad to say are, are no more apparently Tasty Minstrel Games was one of my favourite publishers they always had really cool games um, so I'm sad to see this go but Scoville um, as you might guess by its title is a game about growing peppers um yes it is <laughs> what a great concept and this is a game where theme and kind of mechanics match each other super 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 well um so kind of what happens is i um is that you know there are orders to be fulfilled um so people will want um ch chilies of different types um and then the main part of the game is there is a board in which you're going to put out your chilies down into the ground and as you walk between them you will kind of cross pollinate them so there is a chart so if you walk between a yellow and a blue chili you will make a green chili and um, this kind of idea and so there's a bunch of you on this very small board walking in all these different ways to try and create new species of chili that you can you know use to make chili for like end game scoring or to trade in to kind of give you money and things like that to have during the game um, there's a bidding phase at the start of each round so you get to decide if you would like to plant your chili first or if you want to be the first one to harvest your chilies um, and what's interesting is that there's you can't do both so you can either be first doing one thing or first doing the other so nobody's entirely left out I quite like the way the track does that um, this was actually it wasn't as hard to teach as I thought 
so that was good it's been a while since we played it um and i know it had kind of pipped interest from an, actually a number of people who kind of come to visit and look at our game collection um be like oh scoville you know peppers you know what's it what's it about and like to try it um and it's not very complicated um i do love they give you a chart um to tell you which chilies will make which with which colors and my goal as always is to make the ghost pepper um, yeah, because it's a glittery plastic piece of pepper. Um, all, the, all, all the peppers in this are little wooden pieces, and they all go into the all go into the ground. And the kind of the more complex they are, the taller the the pepper is. And then there's the mighty ghost pepper that is um, made of clear plastic with glitter. So I always insist on building that first, even if I, even if I don't win the game, my goal is always to make the ghost pepper. Um, so yeah, this was kind of really fun and chill, and my group seemed to enjoy it. And the the turns were fairly speedily as well so it was like we were we were clipping along everyone was doing something the turn is very obvious what you're supposed to do and so it didn't lead to like too much kind of overthinking about things we were just kind of enjoying it I suppose um the only issue we had actually is to do with color blindness and the color of the peppers um and they all ended up kind of looking nearly the same color for one of our players um so you know um that's a bit of a, a letdown um and i i hope more games take this kind of thing on board i definitely see more variations and colors in newer games and i hope they keep doing that because uh, color blindness is a fairly popular thing amongst people um so i would love to see you know more of that in games it, sh it should be easy enough to do there it's just colors swap colors um so yeah so that is scoville um have you played it have you tried it what do you think about the theme about peppers making spicy peppers and spicy chilies yeah it's, it's a really fun good game like it, it's fantastic i do i do think it's better with more players because the board builds out quicker because you know everybody's planting chilies not just two of you um so i think I, i've kind of relegated this to a group game rather than a two-player game even though it's not too bad at two and i do have the expansion ready to go even though i've not tried it yet so there we go we'll see what happens with that but yeah let's hear your thoughts on scoville <laughs> um so yeah so i think yeah i think that should be plenty enough for one day right between all the previous games i've played and now these um but yeah like you know keep keep shouting down below and telling me what you've been playing i, I need ideas I'm, I'm running out of notions for board games um, right, okay, so the final section is kind of the personal chit chatty bit. I'm not sure how much of that I'll have today because I'm on holidays, my brain isn't really working. Um, but sure, we'll see, we'll see. Come, come join me there. So happy end of July, everybody. Um, I hope you're all keeping well. Tell me what you've been up to. Have you been doing anything cool over the last month? Um, I'd love to, to hear all about it. Um, so yeah, I'm in the middle of my holidays at the moment. Yay, so I'm trying to get this done kind of quickly so I can <laughs> get back to holidaying. Um, and it's been kind of fun so far. I've been doing a lot of exploring, going to a lot of um, cool places. Um, and I was like, <laughs> I have photos taken. I don't have them edited yet. And I'm like, will I have them edited by the time I edit this? If I do, you can have some photos. Yeah, I don't know. If not, um, keep your eyes peeled on Twitter for my photographs. That's good at, at, at Good Owl Games. Um, or if any of you are interested in seeing them on my Facebook page, go check that out as well. Let me know in the comments below. Where's the easiest place for you guys to view photographs if you wanted to? Um, I'm not sure. But yeah, I got to go to the very beautiful Three Castle Head. Um, so it's this basically castle that's kind of up high on a cliff. Um, and it's got a, a lake with it and it's surrounded by basically water on all sides so it's very defensible it's very very pretty it's very old and it's kind of up a like I'm calling it not quite a mountain but it's definitely a bit of a climb to get to it and so last year when I went for the first time I didn't make it all the way to the castle I wasn't fit enough to climb the whole thing so this year I was going back with a vengeance um, and I should be a whole lot fitter from all the outdoor adventuring I've been doing um, but I didn't make it all the way to the castle but I did make it to the top of the ridge so I could see the castle so I'm, I'm calling that um, a victory um, and some lovely views and things like that going on um, yeah just tri trips out trip to the beach I believe I'm planning a trip on a boat like tomorrow I can't remember the last time I was on a boat uh, I'm only entirely concerned heading out to some island for like you know a little bit of time to go and take pictures and have a look around so yeah that's kind of yeah that's basically that's basically my holidays and of course i'll stop in the board game shop on the way home and see what they've got in stock but yeah so what else has been happening um i've been pretty quiet and things lately because 
world's a bit overwhelming. Um, I've still been going to the cinema and things like that during the, the weekdays. I, in fact, had an entire cinema day, which was whew, a lot of work, but I did get to see three movies. Um, and of course, I've seen the new Thor movie. What are your thoughts on it? It seems to have really divided people. People either really love it or they don't really like it. I'm kind of in the I don't really like it camp. Um, but I'd love to hear what you guys thought of it as well. Um, have you been watching or like, um, to me, watching or watching anything good lately? I meant to differentiate between movies and TV series, but um, um, and things like that. So, yeah, I've got to see all sorts of kind of cool stuff. Um, I saw the whole, you know, where the crawdad sings movie yesterday. Um, it was very much a book that was a movie, but I knew it was a book, but I've not read the book, so not too, not too bad. But, um, I don't know how other people will, will feel about that. Um, but yeah, so that's been kind of good as well. Um, as for the channel, I have a whole bunch of reviews, um, piled up that I should be, you know, getting through very fast. I have the review portion filmed. I just need to do all the intro bits and that takes a bit of time and effort and planning. So I'm getting there. Hopefully once the holidays end, that, that's the plan. Let's not think about the end of the holidays because holidays were kind of nice for like five minutes there. <laughs> um, and that, so yeah, so I'm getting some games in, not, not tons, but some. Um, and yeah, hopefully there'll be more in a little bit. For now, I'm just trying to enjoy the summer, try and take things easy a little bit. Um, and the, as soon now as I deal with these kind of review copies, once they're all ready to roll, I can take a break for a little bit, just maybe. Maybe I could, I thought I was going to skip this video and then I'm like, I'm not ready to skip it just yet. Um, yeah, so that's kind of all of the news around here. It's pretty short lived um, at the moment. Um, I did see the world's ugliest bird. Um, I'll include photo for this. This thing scared the life out of me. Because um, yes, I still am bird watching. Um, why I'm not sure, I blame Wingsman personally. Um, but yeah, keep my eyes peeled for unusual birds and taking their photos. I guess there are worse things I could be doing, you know, like drugs or something. But this is, this is, <laughs> this is what we got to keep ourselves sane, right? Um, cool. So I'm going to call it quits here. I look forward to hearing from you all. Um, come tell me everything. Um, it's, ni it's nice to know you're out there. And tune in again next time for some more reviews. Um, yeah, I have, a good, I have some fun stuff coming up. I think Libertalia will be next um, and whatnot. Uh, yeah, and I'm kind of proud of how that turned out. So, okay, take care, everybody. Tune in soon. Bye-bye.